Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to be introducing the angular material tree component. So we have here some tree data. This is nested hierarchical data with multiple levels of nesting that we want to display in an angular material tree component. And for that we're going to be using an angular material nested tree. We also have available another option, the flat tree. The flat tree is a bit more complex, so let's start with the simplest type of tree, which is the nested tree. So in a nested tree, the different elements of the tree are nested in the dome inside each other. The nested tree is easier to understand and to set up, so unless you have a very specific reason, it's better to use the nested tree that we are about to show you as a default choice and only use the flat tree if you have a specific reason for it. Let's then start setting up our nested tree. So here in our tree demo component, below here the nested tree demo section, let's go ahead and let's add here a matte tree angular material component. This component takes as input a couple of important properties. So one of the first properties that we need to provide here to the material tree component is going to be its data source. This is where the tree is going to get its data. We also need to set up here a tree control property. The control that we are about to pass to this tree is going to be responsible for expanding or collapsing the nodes of the tree. Let's also add here to our material tree some styling. So I'm going to add here a couple of CSS classes. I'm going to add here the example tree CSS class. And let's also add here an angular material standard drop shadow with an elevation of four. Now let's talk about these two main properties. We are going to set these properties up as member variables here of our class. So I'm going to collapse here our tree data and we are going to start defining here a couple of member variables. The first is going to be the data source. And because our example is going to be having two types of trees here on the same component, let's call this the nested data source. We're going to create this by using the class mat tree nested data source. The data source class takes in here as a generic input parameter the type of the node. In this case, this is going to be our course node. So this interface here defines exactly what is the structure of each node in our nested tree data. Next to the data source, we're going to be setting up here our tree control. So we're going to be calling this also the nested tree control so that we can distinguish it from the control of the flat tree that we're going to be implementing later on. And we are going to implement this by using the nested tree control class from the Angular CDK. This takes in a generic input parameter, which is the type of our node. And it also needs here a function. This function should be able to extract the children of a node so we're going to be implementing it in the following way. We're going to take our node, which is of type course node, and we're going to be accessing here the children property. This way, the control knows how to extract the children of a given node. Remember that the node can have any structure. It doesn't have to have this name and children structure. You can define this however you need. This data source that we currently have here is currently empty, so there is no data inside it. So here, for example, in ng on init, for demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to populate this with some data. So let's access the data source and let's access here the data property and let's assign it here our tree data. This is just some test data that we have here handy in order to demonstrate how the component works. Now that we have the data source and the tree control, let's go ahead and let's plug it here in the tree. So here goes the data source and here we are going to be applying our tree control. Now that we have the inputs of the material tree in place, let's talk about how to display the nodes. So we're going to have two types of nodes in our tree. We're going to be having the leaf nodes. So these are the most nested nodes in our tree that don't have any children, such as for example these ones or these ones here in this part of the tree that has more nesting. So here we have several levels of nesting, here we only have one level of nesting. 
So here, these leaf nodes here, or these leaf nodes here, we are going to need to display them somehow on the tree. We need a separate component for the expandable nodes, but let's first start by defining how to display the leaf nodes that are the simplest ones. So to display a leaf node, we need to define a material tree node component. This leaf node by default is not expandable or collapsible. So if we want to add it that property, if we want to make it expandable if the user clicks on it, then we need to add here the mat tree node toggle directive. Without this, the data will be displayed, but we won't be able to collapse the node by clicking on it. Let's add here the content of the node. So for that, we are going to need the node name. So if you remember here in our tree structure, we have here the name property. We're going to be using it to display the title of the lesson here. But for that, we need to access the node object. So in a very similar way to what we did with the Angular Material Data Table, we need here a special structural directive that is going to give us access to the data of the tree. And that directive is the mat tree node def directive. This structural directive is going to tell here the enclosing material tree that it needs access to the data of the tree. So here we are going to be defining a node local variable that we're going to be using to access the node data. In our case, we simply want to print out the name to the screen. And with this, we have the leaf nodes of our tree in place. Let's now talk about the expandable nodes. So in order to display an expandable node, we are going to need a different directive. We're going to be needing here the mat nested tree node directive. Let's start adding here the HTML of an expandable node. So we're going to be starting by adding here a container div and let's add it here a class. Let's add here the class mat tree node just to add some styling to the expandable node. Next, the expandable node is going to be composed of two visual elements. One is going to be a collapse or expand button. And after that, we're going to be displaying the node name as well. So let's start here with the button. The button is going to be an angular material icon button. So let's go ahead and let's apply here the mat icon button directive. This button is going to be used to expand or collapse here our expandable node. So we are going to be applying to it the mat tree node toggle directive. Without this, the node won't be expandable or collapsible. The button can be used to display an angular material icon. So we can use here, for example, the expand more icon like this. And we use this icon in case that the control is expanded. If the control is collapsed, we want to use a different icon that is called Chevron Right. So these are just Angular Material Design icons that are readily available to be used. And we choose the icon by specifying here a string code. So we need to display the correct icon to the user depending on the expanded state of the node. Let's then for that apply here an expression. We're going to check the state of the node by using the nested tree control. The nested tree control has here an is expanded function to which we can pass the node. And this is going to return us a boolean that is going to indicate if the node is expanded or not. In order to be able to access here the node, we're going to need to do something like we did here in our leaf node. We need the mat tree node def directive. So let's go ahead and let's apply it here. So now we have access here to the node. So if the node is expanded, we're going to be using the expand more icon. And if the node is not expanded, we're going to be using the chevron right angular material icon. So these are just two arrow icons that signal to the user that the node can be expanded or collapsed. We are going to be seeing these icons in action on the screen in a moment. So after the collapse or expand button, we need to add here the name of the node. Let's access here the node name property and print it out to the screen. 
Now you must be wondering at this point how will the tree know when to display here this as a leaf node and when to display this as an expandable node. The tree will take that decision using here a when function that can be passed here to the math tree node def directive. So here we can pass using the when keyword a function that we can write in our component that is going to help the tree decide when to display a template for a given node. So this function that we're going to be writing is going to be called has nested child and it's going to be a member variable here of our tree demo component. So before writing the has nested child function, let's talk about how this will work in practice. So the tree is going to try to display a given node. It's going to look for all the templates that it has available. In this case, we can see that we have here two templates for a node and it's going to check the when functions of each template and pass it the node and see if that function returns true. If so, then the corresponding template is going to be used. If a template does not have a when function, like here the leaf node template, then that template is going to be used in case that all the other when functions return false. So this is going to act as our default template. Now that we understand better how this will work, let's go ahead and let's implement the has nested child member function. So this is going to be a member function here of our component. This function is going to take as input a couple of arguments. So first, this is going to be the numeric index of the node. And then the second argument is going to be the node itself. So in this case, a course node. This function now needs to return a boolean. In the case of our function, we need to check here our node children property, which by the way, might not be filled in. And here we need to check the length of the array. If this length is larger than zero, then it means that this is an expandable node. So this is going to be returning true. On the other hand, if the children property is not filled in and if the length is not larger than zero, this is going to be returning false. And so this template here is not going to be displayed. Instead, the tree is going to be using the default template to display the leaf node. Now, before going any further, let's quickly fix here a couple of glitches. So here it's the mat tree node def directive that we need to use. And also this string here needs to be inside a material icon directive. So only like this will the button display a material icon correctly. And with this, we now have here our initial version of our material tree. Let's have a look at this in action in a larger screen. So we can see that the data is getting displayed. That's a great first step. Yet if we now click here on the icon, we can see that the icon is changing depending on if we want to collapse or expand the node. But we can see that the children of the expandable node are not getting displayed. In order to understand this, if we go back here to the component, we are going to see that this behavior kind of makes sense because here on the template for the expandable node, we are specifying how to display the node itself, but nowhere here we have specified how to display the children of the node, right? In order to be able to display the children of the node, we need to apply here a special mat tree node outlet directive that is specifically designed to be able to display the children of a given node. And for that, we need somewhere to apply it. So in order not to create a new HTML element, let's go ahead and let's create here an ng container and let's apply here the mat tree node outlet directive. With this directive in place, let's have a look at our nested tree in action. So as we can see, we have here the content of the node, even though the node is collapsed and not expanded. Also, we have here a second problem, which is there is no indentation here of the data, making the tree look a little bit confusing. So how we're going to fix this? Let's start first with the indentation problem. We're going to wrap here our ng container in a container div. And to this div, we're going to be applying here a nested node CSS class. And let's move the ng container inside it. 
If we check here the CSS of our 3Demo component, we can see here at the bottom that we have some CSS that is going to apply the correct padding to our nodes. So if we now try this out, we are going to see that at least the problem of the padding of the tree is now solved. You can see here that the data is correctly indented depending on the level of the data on the tree. But now we still have here this problem, which is the data is getting displayed independently of the collapsed or expanded state here of the nested node. So in order to fix this, we're going to be using another CSS class that we have here, which is example tree invisible. And we're going to apply this here to our container for the children of each node depending on the state of the node. So if the node is expanded, we are going to be removing this special CSS class and if the node is collapsed, we are going to be adding it in order to hide the elements. We can do so by using this standard Angular notation, so we don't even need ng class because we are only going to be adding here one class. So let's see when are we going to apply the example tree invisible CSS class. We're going to be accessing our nested tree control and using here the is expanded function, we're going to pass in the node. So if the node is expanded, then we don't want to apply this class. And with this last small detail in place, the implementation of our nested tree is complete. Let's have a look at it in action. So here, when we start the tree, we can see that the children of the expandable nodes are all hidden as expected. If we now click here on the expand button, we can see the children of this particular node and these are all leaf nodes. Next, if we click here on this expand button, we're going to see here two nested nodes, but these nodes by themselves are expandable as well. So if we click here on the expand button, we can see here their leaf nodes. If these nodes would be expandable, we could also expand them here with an expand button. So all of this logic is applicable independently of the number of nesting levels of the tree. We can see also that the collapse button is working correctly as expected. Now, going back to the beginning, you might be thinking, why is this called a nested tree? Well, if you inspect this here with the dev tools, you are going to see that the nodes are nested inside each other. So here, as we can see, we have the component for the forms components material tree node. And if we go up, we are going to see that here we get another node, which is going to be the mat nested tree node, which corresponds to this node here. So as you can see, the nodes show up nested inside each other in the DOM structure. Now this has some advantages and some inconvenience, as we are going to discuss further on in this course, but in general, this is the simplest tree to set up. You just set up a data source, a tree control, you set up a couple of templates for your nodes, display the node children, and that's it. There are certain cases though where maybe the nested tree is not the best choice. So for that we're going to be giving an alternative which is the flat tree and we're going to be discussing in our next lesson when to use each tree and why.